Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this Rare But Real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Cassett, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey, I'm so glad to be able to record a podcast uh, with my daughter. And this today we're just going to, ha- it won't be a really long podcast. We're just going to talk about um, the beginning of a new school year. And we know that is different for so many different people. I know that my daughter-in-law um, with her children, they, they've been in school almost a month now, or maybe it is a month now, uh, or no, not quite a month now. And uh, people start at different times, whether they're in brick and mortar schools or whether they're homeschooling or where they're doing hybrids or whatever it is. And always that time of year brings um, transition. It brings um, getting things uh, in order, especially if you've had like a more laid back, relaxed summer. And even if you don't want to call the summer relaxed, because I know a lot of people do a lot of different things in the summer, there still is a change that takes place. And I know when um, Grace Anna, when I was, uh, when y'all were young and growing up, we always started back our school year right after Labor Day. And I do remember, in fact, I felt it even this past week when I start seeing the leaves falling off the tree. It always is like they start falling a little bit in August, or at least they do here in where I live. Um, and it always makes me think about the transition time, whether it's the transition of, of schooling because it's another year, a different year, and so many different things are going on. Another way, because I've always said is... Um, and told women for so so much of uh, of life is that a, a home life. If you if you run in a home, it's never static. It's always dynamic. It's always changing. Uh, kids are at different stages and ages. You're at different stages and ages as the mom, and as you think through things and the new experiences, not so new experiences. Anyway, I say that all kind of as an introduction um, because Grace Anna, I know that not only has this summer been full with just normal things that y'all have done as a family, but you added a baby to your family, and um, and then now uh, at the beginning of the school year, um, or thinking about that and all the prep for it and what you're doing, um, I just think people would love to hear how you've planned um, this year, what your kids are doing, and um, yeah, just how you're going to walk through this time. So I'm going to hand it to you, and then if I want to interrupt you and ask a question, I'll do that, but I want you to go for it. Well, Mom, I love that you kicked it off by saying we're going to record for a short amount of time (laughs) because, you know, the season of life I'm in was, you know, I I had put Truman down for a nap, but I also fit in a bunch of little tasks before recording this. And so I texted you saying, I have a little bit of time. I don't know how long it will be till uh, he wakes up. So that will probably be true for a while. The future episodes that I record may not be very long. But I love, too, just your thoughts on how starting school around Labor Day, um, it's just such a a nice time. So I'll talk about this later, but this year we are taking a break from our co-op, which is a really tough decision. Mm -hmm. But because of that, I had flexibility to take the entire month of August off and just enjoy it with my kids and have really what I feel is a full summer Uh um, versus a shortened summer. And so it is really nice to start after Labor Day and just to um, enjoy the full summer. Now, Um, now I want to ask you a question real quick. Hold on to your next thought mm -hmm. because your co-op that you've had, so that's always started earlier. Is that correct? Yeah, it has started second or third week of August typically. and. And I always would still do a slow start Uh with school. I would start the co-op, but it definitely just made the summer shorter because we were having to get ready and just all of that. So um, being able to take the longer summer, and I guess that does kind of, you know, you're asking about how I planned and how Grant and I prayed for this year, just knowing that Truman would be entering the family and 
um, as I was thinking about what I would share this morning, I thought about Luke 14, uh, where Jesus is just teaching the multitude and he's telling them that if they're going to be his disciple, that they need to count the cost. Um, and he talks about, he gives a couple illustrations. Um, but one of them, he says, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who see it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Yeah. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to beat him who comes against him with 20,000 or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks him to succeed. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. And Jesus here is obviously talking about the cost of following him because there's this great multitude. And right now in his ministry, they all want to follow him. But he's telling his disciples, it's going to get really, really hard. And you need to make sure that you understand what it actually means to be my disciple. Mm -hmm. And I say all that because um, at the beginning of the summer, Grant brought this passage of scripture up to me as we were praying at the school year. And he just said to me, you know, you really need to count the cost and think through what you're actually able to do this next year and I think he was thinking ahead because he knew you know Truman was going to enter our family obviously we were just praying that everything would go well with the pregnancy and um and because we homeschooled I just had to think through realistically what can I handle and to really count the cost and and Jesus is saying you know it's it's a good king who is only willing to make war if he is prepared. Um, and so as I think about being a good mother and, and being um, a good homeschool mother in this season of my life, I want to make sure that I have really counted the cost. Um, so that meant that back in, I guess, April and May, Grant and I were talking about the fall. And I'm so thankful that we did because Mom, you know this about me. I'm not a real big planner. Mm -hmm. Like I, I prefer spontaneity and, um, sometimes, you know, it's not good, but I like to do things at the last minute. So, but being able to really plan out the school year for this year, and I think Truman made me do that. Mm -hmm. I am so, so thankful. So, um, I think that's my first just encouragement and thought is just as mothers, always thinking through, okay, what has God called me to? And then how in this season can I best do that? What do I need to add? What do I need to take away? What do we need to change? What do we need to keep the same so that we can actually finish it? <laughs> because I feel like I've also often been this person in the tower. You can see, or, you know, building a tower in my life is filled with half built towers. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really want to be faithful and be able to complete fully the things that that I commit to. And obviously that my first priority um, is that I would be teaching and training my children in wisdom. Mm -hmm. And of course, as we're starting the school year, um, and we've talked about this before, you know, there are different ways to educate your children. But for Grant and I, the greatest priority is that they are learning wisdom and the truth of God's word. And for us, that meant that public school was not absolutely not on the table, but mm -hmm. that it would be some form of Christian education. So as I think about that, I think about Proverbs 1, where it talks about you know, father and mother teaching that to their children. That's the, the big priority that I want to keep first and foremost in my mind. And then that letting that guide me to the smaller, smaller decisions. But I will say this before I kind of get into like little minutia. Mm -hmm. A phone call to an older woman always helps. 
when you're trying to think through planning and such a phone call was made to you at some point. I'm trying to think, I guess it was after I had Truman because I was second guessing some of my decisions. So that's the other thing too, is counting the cost making your plan, and then sticking to it. Mm -hmm. So mom, before I kind of talk about our school year, maybe you could share some of the things you shared with me in terms of that I had called you saying, okay, I'm trying to decide, um, you know, I had made the big decisions about school, but I was trying to decide extracurricular things for my kids. And you gave me just some really good generic encouragements. You actually didn't tell me what to do, um, but you just reminded me of some very important things. I remember saying to you, mom, I'm so thankful that I have you to call and you can remind me of what I need to remember in this season. And I think that's what us as younger women who love the Lord want to be reminded. We want the older women to speak truth into our life, lives, but we also need to know those older women who are willing to, to say say to us the things that will help us count the cost. So mom, maybe do you remember that? Well, I I do remember our conversation. I do remember that always the bottom line, whenever any young woman, whether it's you or whether it's some, you know, others that are, that I know well, or even young women that I don't know very well, well, but I always remind them of the negotiables versus the non-negotiables, you know, and considering the stages of life that we're in, because you never get these particular years back, you know, and so I, I remember talking to you, and I don't know if this is specifically what you are referring to but i remember talking about the things that you cannot let slip and and mm-hmm. those are th- those are obviously your home and family and of course you being a pastor's wife i always remind you and other young pastor's wives wives who come to me and ask me different things and say the best ministry you're going to have in the lives of the women in your church is to be a faithful wife and mother and manage your family and then of course beyond that because we know that that's what God's called us to do. Then beyond that, we employ our gifts in the body of Christ. And sometimes wisdom would dictate where we employ those because we should be, we know scripture teaches we should be involved in, in our local church. Sometimes it's the wisdom dictates where we serve, where we use our giftedness. It's kind of where our family is and what season of life we were in. So I do remember that. And I also remember um, telling you that there's the p- pull to do, to, to take in a billion um, extracurricular activities for our kids. We think, oh, this would be good. This would be good. This would be good. But sometimes you have to hone in and think through, well, what's one thing that this child's really good at or this child would really like to do and this one. So you don't feel like you're just all over the map doing everything. Um, and then you're running ragged because then your life is nothing but sitting in a, you know, um, that, that you're running a taxi cab service, <laughs> you and your <laughs> husband. I do remember talking about those things. And then I also remember remember, and I don't know if, again, if this is one of the things that you're thinking of, but I always say, you know, God's given us a man, if we're married, and he, especially if he loves Christ, he's still, you know, our husbands are the head of our homes. And there's a lot, lots of times our restlessness as women, or I don't know what to do. And I, this is, sometimes I would say to you, well, what, what does Grant think? You know, what, what's Mm -hmm. his advice? You know, and then of course, you know, what he knows you and he knows your family. What does he think? Rest in that if he says let's Mm -hmm. you know let's don't do this but let's do this rest in that and i say that out of years of experience being married to your dad of like sometimes i'm like torn up about a decision whether it's concerning y'all or whether even now at this stage of my life whether it's concerning i don't know there's a lot lots of things that sometimes just the fact that i sometimes i don't bounce it off of him and then i say what do you think and he says I think this, and it's just like, thank you. That was just what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. So those are the main things I remember sharing. And there may be something else that, um, that you remember that, um, that's not coming to my mind right now, but those are the, those are the main things. And I, and I also remember too feeling when you were talking about the different decisions y'all were making of feeling or what I sensed from you is you were feeling divided, you know, because Mm -hmm. the kids loved the co op you were doing but god seemed to be through your husband especially saying this would be more consolidated this would be more um 
with a, a new baby and everything else, this would help us, you know, with Veritas, this would help us and, and be us be more unified. And I remember also saying, if, if this is the way God's leading you, he's going to bring your children along and they're going to have new experience and new things that they love. Because there's always change. There's always things that we leave behind that we, we, and I'm thinking even as an adult, that we're like, oh, I really miss that. But then there's new things that God brings our way. And some things are for a season. They're not for the whole time. And um, and so I remember that too, because as moms, we're always thinking, oh, I don't want my child to be upset because we're not doing that anymore. But we have to remember the God who is above us and leads us. He brings us to new things that we love even more. So, mm-hmm. so th- yeah, so that's, that was the conversation <laughs> I was thinking of. And I just, I wanted you to share some of those things because it was so helpful to me. Um, I remember you also said, you know, keep the main things the main right. things. Yep. But I really appreciated that you reminded me of being under grant leadership because, you know, as Christian wise, I know I can often say, you know, theoretically, theologically, I believe it's committed to my husband, of course. <laughs> but then sometimes practically, right. I struggle. And uh, so often, as you said, our husband has an idea of what would be good for our families. Mm-hmm. I would say, even if you're a listener listening who thinks, okay, my husband is not as godly as I would like him to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So often still the wisdom that they provide is so helpful. And to operate outside of that is going to be incredibly challenging. And so uh, I think I was so thankful that Grant, when I, and often I come to him, you know, and say, okay, here's what I'm struggling with. Um, Here's what I'm thinking through. And I, of course, love to list like, here are all the positives. Here's all the negatives. Right. Here's how I feel about it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, and then Grant is able to offer wisdom. And I'm really thankful, too, because we did, like you mentioned, um, we've done classical conversations now for, for many mm-hmm. years. And Grant and I are co- just love the classical model of educating our children. And, and we're not going to change that, Lord willing. Um but it seems like the right time to, to take a break from the co-op because I have to be at the co-op with the kids and with five kids and me trying to get into a real routine and rhythm at home for sure. us. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, you know, just seeing Grant just could see that and said, hey, I think that as we're going into the fall, this is what would be best for our family. Mm-hmm. And I knew he was right. I said so many times, like, I know you're right, but this is so hard because (laughs) I love my co-op. I think it works well for so many families and it, it's worked well for us well, you know in what? the past saying that just hearing you saying that reminds me <laughs> of the times when I had when I was had the children and they're singing those songs and we're putting on the video yes. and I was like I ended Incredible. up order, I ordered it <laughs> so I yes. could, I could learn it better so yeah so a season even helped your your old mother you know think oh this is so great because you know I don't know if it was coming into vogue when y'all were growing up but I didn't know about the classical education model when I was teaching y'all. I was just doing the best I could with what I knew, you know, and what was available mm-hmm. to me. So mm-hmm. so I just remember thinking, this is amazing. <laughs> so and they have a great I foundation. Know. It? But it's a season. It laid a foundation. Yes, that's right. And, and then that's right. that's right. It's a season that laid a foundation and, because God doesn't waste anything and he leads through all these things and now you're into new things, you know, and a new schedule and a new way of um, your kids' learning and I just think that's wonderful you know the, that it, yeah yes and I think such a good reminder to um to be confident in what mm-hmm. God has called you to as a mother and I think you know so often we can look around and compare ourselves to what other moms are doing and what other women women are doing right. but God is going to equip and give us the grace for what he's called us to that's right um and so there's just such freedom in that 
uh, figuring out. And really, I just think I have just kept on going back to that principle of, you know, keeping the main things, the main things, counting the cost. Um, and one of the things that I, as a pastor's wife, was encouraging my women to do uh, at Capital is just, you know, thinking through, like you said, um, obviously your husband and your family being your main priority. But as I even think about the school year, I think about, okay, I want to make sure that time in the word is a, is a priority for me, um, that I have a place to serve in the body mm-hmm. of Christ. So thinking through, okay, where can I serve that will be a blessing it is obviously whenever you serve, it's going to be a sacrifice. So I'm not saying one that's not a sacrifice, but one that fits well yes, that with fit, your family yes, life. Absolutely. Um, and that, you know, it does, isn't pulling you away from your responsibilities um, at home. And it's just really neat to see as you pray about those things. And as I prayed about those things, just how the Lord, has provided and now I mean told you this not but I'm back in the student ministry helping out with high school girls Mm -hmm. and that's on Sunday nights which is perfect for me because Sunday for our family I mean it's you know it's all about church Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it just fits well with it not being a separate time during the week for me right that I am going out to serve and so um yeah so I think just keeping those main things the main things counting the cost as I head into the school year and being aware of my own limitations um, and not acting like I'm superwoman (laughs) and can do it all. (laughs) Right. right. Because I can't. No one one is. And even if we think they are, they're not, you know, something is giving, (laughs) something is, you know, something is falling through the cracks. You know, I'm just saying, and that's why it's like, and that's life, you know, life, there's going to be things that we think, oh, I wish I had this or this or this. I, Christina, I even remember, you know, when I, cause I, I've always, I taught Sunday school for years and years and years, Sunday school. Now I've, I'm still teaching in the church. I teach kids on Wednesday night. I teach women at our women's life ministry and I have other opportunities to teach at special events and all those kinds of things in terms of women and children. Um, but I taught Sunday school for years and I was teaching, I started out teaching teaching like preschoolers and young children because of the ages of y'all. And then I moved into, you know, like the middle school as y'all grew. And then I, then I landed with the high school girls and I taught them for Mm -hmm. so many years and absolutely loved it. But then at some point I transitioned out of that. um, And, and I remember talking about this changing of seasons and times of life. I remember at the time feeling really sad that I wasn't teaching high school girls anymore. And even a lot of the, moms in our church are saying, oh, I was so looking forward to my daughter being, you now she's old enough to be in the high school girls class and you're not there. I said, well, she come to woman's life and she can be a part of, you know, because I'll still be teaching and I'll still be available and all those. But my point with all of that is God brought me to new places to serve. Like then I started being like um, a greeter in the children's building and, and he expanded where I was now interacting with the young families again, because, you know, when you're focused on your, you've got a lesson and you're going to teach you don't you're not socializing in the same way I should say right still doing it but it's different and so then I saw that God brought me to a a different place of ministry because you know again it's like nothing steady but but not oh I'm not I'm not teaching the high school girls so therefore I'm not involved anymore no 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 it wasn't that kind of thing it was just a shifting you know a shifting Mm -hmm. of of where I'm going um, to serve although I've never stopped teaching first, second, third graders scripture memory on Wednesday nights. I think I'll do that until the Lord, you know, (laughs) takes me home. I don't think I'll ever, you know, transition out of that. I mean, I could, but I'm just saying, um, but all I'm saying with that is, is is the shifting, whether it's God leading y'all as he has with your family to shift from classical conversations into this new way that, you know, with Veritas and the other things that your children are doing. It's just, you know, you reevaluate. It's kind of like, you know, and I always would say to parents, just jump in the, when you said a minute ago about, you know, being confident, sometimes you just got to jump in the pool and get wet and say, we're doing this this year. And, we're, you know, and we're going to get wet and see if we pass the swim test or if we have to get out and walk around the pool again. And that's a great, that's a great point too, because 
obviously as much as you're counting the cost, there's always a sense where you have to step out and say, uh, and which Jesus is actually saying, he's actually saying like, you're going to have to step out and faith and follow me. Um, but there's always that sense of when you do make the decision, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, there's a step of faith. And I love that you mentioned the sadness that often comes because sometimes I think we think, oh, if I'm always doing the right thing, I'm always going to be super happy every right. moment of doing the right thing. Right. <laughs> it's just not true. Sometimes no. when you're doing the right thing, there is a grief mm-hmm. that accompanies it. Um, I will say that I do believe, you know, over time when you're walking in obedience, that joy comes. Like even this mm-hmm. week, as we're getting started, I told Grant, thank you. Thank you again for just reminding me of what we needed for this year because I have walked through a lot of that grief but now I'm beginning to reap the joy of doing what God has called Mm -hmm. us to do Mm -hmm. um but there's just you know there are there can be grief of sadness to saying goodbye to a to a season of something and something that you really loved because here's the thing everything that we say yes to that we think mm-hmm. God, you know we know God's led us down this means we're saying no to a lot lots of other things and even things that we've done in the past that we love but if we're, we're saying yes to this then that you know I can't say yes to everything you know whether it's it, whether it's a curriculum whether it's you know I don't know I mean whatever it is when we're saying yes to something we're saying no to other things things and and that's, that's just right yeah so yeah so anyway that's and so therefore you're you're saying yes to being just I'm thinking about y'all with this since we're talking about this whole transition of beginning of the academic year you know you said mm-hmm. yes to some things that, that Grant and you as your children's parents felt like no this is this is how we sense God leading us this is how he's opened these doors but that means we can't do what we were doing and um right uh, and and yeah there is a sense of sadness and sadness doesn't always mean, you know, it just means we loved something, you know. Yeah. It's like I, I love something that I did. And, and yeah, there, there's always, it's just like the same. Think about it, Grace Anne. It's the same kind of, it's not the same, but it's, but it's the same principle of like, I loved when my child was four years old. It was such a fun mm. age. And the questions, and I miss that, and I miss that. But, oh, he can't, you know, he or she, they, they can't stay that age forever. And there's a sense of sadness that comes with that, that they're not, they're not that age anymore, but now they're eight or now they're 12 and it's a whole new season of life. And so saying yes to growing up means, you know, they're not going to stay little anymore. We can't control. I know. And I think this time of year, definitely for mothers, you know, there's just, it's, it's kind of like a birthday, Mm -hmm. you know, every birthday that you see your kid get another year older you're very excited but there's also that twinge of how are you this old and I think the school year also kind of brings that about and then especially if there's some sort of change Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with the school year you know and I think about even Audrey Kate is in seventh grade how's that possible (laughs) I'm gonna blink and she's gonna be in high school um but facing that right Go ahead, Mom. What oh, were you going to no, say? I was just going to say, think about being my age, and here I am having a podcast with my daughter. <laughs> and, and so often I think about, I, I always remember this one time you and I had spent the day, I think we'd gone to Charleston. It might have been Hilton Head. I don't know. But we had lunch, and we went shopping. You might remember, but you were about Audrey Kate's age, maybe 11 or 12 or whatever. I still remember your face. I remember your hair, because I just remember when we got home, we had been laughing all the way home about talking about different things and we pulled in the driveway it was dark but you looked at me when we were parking the car and you said I bet if we were the same age we would be best friends (laughs) (laughs) I I just remember that because you were still seeing you know I'm your authority I'm your mom Mm -hmm. but that day was Mm -hmm. like a line for me in terms of I and I remember I didn't you know cry in front of you right then but I remember that night writing in my journal thinking I hope we're going to be like really good friends when she's a grown-up you know, but this was the best day that I'm never going to forget because she had such a good time with just her mom. 
you know, and, uh, and that, so anyway, I'm saying that because you said, oh, true. Yes. And then I discovered that you don't have to be the same age. That's right. <laughs> exactly. You don't. That's right. But you were thinking like, if we were like little girls together, you know, we would just be best friends and I'm sure we would have. <laughs> well, and I think about that, just, it just makes you think about as we're embarking on the school year and life is full, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like I'm taking advantage of every little chunk of time um, to, to get something done. But I think it was a podcast probably six months ago now where uh, one of the questions was, how do you spend time with each of your children mm-hmm. individually every day? Yeah. And we had talked about, you know, well, first of all, that that's not a command that that's something that you have to do. I mean, mm-hmm. that would be a huge burden if mm-hmm. you felt like you had to hit some wicket imaginary wicked every day but my point in saying that is it made me think of it when you talked about that time with us in the car is that the lord does provide these special opportunities in the midst of the busyness in the midst of the school year for us to slow down with our kids and just an example of that was uh, we were running errands about a week ago and now you know my kids are old enough if it's the older ones they can sit in the car if i you know see them outside the you know this is the amazon the UPS store there was uh-huh. windows and uh-huh. audrey kate was there so she could sit in the car um and so i said okay charles you're gonna walk in with me today to UPS, and you're gonna carry the boxes so i got him out and he helped me carry the boxes and i held his hand he said Mom, normally, you know, we don't get to do this just me and you to carry the boxes in. Oh. This is, you know, really special that, you know, you had me carry the boxes in with you. Yeah. And then I did something similar with Patrick later that week. We were walking in and we were going to get a snack from somewhere. And I took him in and he was just looking up at me, holding my hand, so happy. I mean, each of these things mm-hmm. was 10 minutes right. of this individual time. But as I head into another school year and the fullness of it, those things really showed me that there are moments that we can bond and and build in to our kids in the midst of the busyness that they will always remember. And in these moments, like you talk about that you're still remembering, mm-hmm. you know. Well, we think so often, you know how you uh, even, I guess it's been in recent years, you know, when people use that term like, oh, I just want to give my children a magical childhood, you know, and, and, and not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with that, wanting to give them a good childhood, because we should want to do that. But so often it's, uh, it's in the everyday moments. That's what it is. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the glimpses of, of God working in the everyday moments and uh, moments and us being attuned to that kind of like if we take seriously what the scripture says to make the most of our time. Time because the days are evil and that just means making it's not like being anxious about it but it's just like oh you know you're coming in the kitchen you're asking me a question then you know we'll talk about it while I'm doing this and it's just in like in regular life so often those things happen and those are just the everyday moments that you have to do oh I have to get this package in I have to you know yeah you can come mm-hmm. with me to do this or whatever because it mean it does mean a lot I you know and I can think of things like that in, of my childhood with my mom and dad where it was nothing special but it was like special in the moment because of the way it unfolded you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, like it was special in the moment, like one time when my, my dad was taking care of us and a big thunderstorm came up and he was studying cause he was, he was getting his, um, uh, he was in seminary and I, and he had his Bible and all this stuff, you know, laid out on his bed. He was working on his bed and my mom, I don't know where she was, but maybe she was working as a nurse, a late shift. I don't know, but I do know a thunderstorm came up and I was so afraid of thunderstorms. I just ran to my dad's room and he said, oh, he just stopped what he was doing. He looked at me. He said, oh, you can just come sit up here. I know you're scared of the thunderstorm. And I just remember <laughs> I sat up on the thunderstorm and I, there were open Bibles there and him working. And we were, I don't remember us talking, but I just remember it was so special to me to be up on the, <laughs> on the bed while he's studying the Bible. And I was safe because, you know, I was sitting there with my dad. I don't know. I don't know why that came to my eyes now, but it's that I type love of it. thing. It's that type of thing so often. So Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the type of attitude and heart. Obviously, if for homeschooling moms 
we have to toe the line in terms of, okay, this is the routine. This is the mm-hmm. schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, we are taking this. No, you will not do that. Yes, you will do this. Like, obviously, that's right. incredibly important. But also just leaning in and, and enjoying, you know, those moments. I think about when we were kids, you used to lay down with us and talk about the day. Uh-huh. Oh, was this, 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 what did you think about this? And that was funny when that happened. And, you know, so those are things now that kids just, they love. And, it, and it's a way to kind of slow down in the midst of the busyness of, you know, the week of, of taking a few moments and just leaning in and talking about the moments of their day and right. what what they most enjoyed and, um, you know, funny things they saw or right. people or what somebody said or, you know. So those are just so meaningful moments, I guess. And, and I think as I was thinking through the school year and counting the cost, I want to make sure that I have plenty of bandwidth yeah. that I'm not missing out on on those things. Other things I can miss out, like you said, saying yes to something and saying no to something else. And we have to be willing as women to say no to those things so that we can say yes to the things that we will not regret right, saying yes right, to. Right. I love, yeah, I love so, And I know we need to close out this podcast because you have a busy day in front of you, um, or mm-hmm. conti- you know, to continue on with your life. But I, I just want to, as we close, I just want to mention earlier when you made the comment how so often we, when we were talking about submitting to our husband, we said we know in theory and we're committed to that. But then when, it, when the rubber meets the road, we don't always apply what the way. And it just made me think of, and it, since we're talking about children and all that, <clears throat> I love the passage in Mark chapter nine because you know that's and I'm not going to read it or expound it but I'm just going to refer to it um in Mark chapter 9 when the disciples you know they're arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom and they're talking about that and and of course Jesus tells them you know um whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me and whoever receives me does not receive me but him who sent me and he talks about being like a child and then it's like and he, and he talks about receiving children and all that and then you turn the page of scripture in the very next chapter they have the opportunity to apply what God what Christ has just mm-hmm. taught them about children and that's when the time when you know that all the people were bringing children to the Lord so that he could touch them he could bless them but then it's just like the disciples rebuked them it's like if you would think they took what jesus had taught them about how important children are he'd just been talking to them about that and then here the crowds come and they're bringing the children to jesus and the disciples are the one they didn't take that teaching and apply it he you know they rebuked the people and that's when jesus got mad you know he got indignant that i think the word is indignant in scripture but and that's when he gives that positive and negative command he says you know i mean he says permit them to come to me do not hinder them for such is the kingdom of god it's like guys that's why i just told you <laughs> but yeah. and i and i just think about that you know just in all of this areas of of um you know, the more we stay in the Word, because I know it's a, it, it's so important to you, because you talk about it all the time, be in the Word, be in the Word, be in the Word, and then we take what God's teaching us in the Word, and God will lead us right into situations, whether it's we're homeschooling <laughs> our children, whether it's submitting to our husbands, whether it's whatever it is. He's going to lead us right there. It's like, you know, to apply it. And then the issue comes, am I going to apply it? Or forget to forgive someone, or to give a blessing mm-hmm. instead of an insult, or to walk in, you know, whatever it is. Is. He gives us those opportunities um, to do it. And I don't know, it just made me think of that when you shared that earlier. Anything else you want to say before we close it out? I, I just love that reminder of let's walk in, in, in the things that we say that we believe. I know that I so long to do that. And just knowing that that's where the joy is, that's where the fellowship with the Lord is. So, yeah, just praying for that this school year. Yeah. Uh, well, I love you, daughter, and I love your kids, and I hope to do the same type of uh, podcast with um, Kesset and Maureen as they're getting their years um, going with their kids, although, like I said, Maureen's have been a little bit, but still, I want to hear her insight and Kesset's as well. So let me pray for you. Yes, oh, love you too. No, go ahead. Did you want to say something? 
Nope, I just okay. said love you too. Okay. All right, Father, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for this time with uh, to be able to talk about these things. And I pray for all of uh, my girls who um, are in the middle, the throes of parenting, who are schooling their kids and being the managers of their home. And for my uh, girls who... Um, who are married and have all, all five of them as they are helpless to their husbands and as they are uh, walking with you. And um, I just pray you continue to help us all grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering From The Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.